Hello, everybody. This is Fahim Jackson, and it's episode 57 of my podcast show, In The Know. This is a short-form podcast show which is aimed at putting people in the know with a variety of topics, using my experiences and viewpoints in life to put people in that know. What is the know? It's using my understanding of the experiences to make people better understand the world around them. The following is an intro speech into the topic of today, and an introduction speech is regarding keeping the government off your back with student loan debt. Ever since I left undergraduate experience, I've been trying to keep the government off my back. And the reason is because student loan debt that I have is large in scale. It's because of this loan debt that I've been panicking regarding how to pay for something that I really don't have much interest in building a career with. Yet the beers are gonna the bills are gonna keep coming. What do you do about the bills? The government will start sending you mail regarding this delinquent money owed. They may even start to garnish your wages. And here's where the reality of what you're dealing with starts to set in. Because you're going to have to address it sooner or later. Otherwise, the interest will kill you along with the already debt you have from school. How do you keep the student loans off your back? Let's look at while you're in school. How to pay? Look at things like scholarships. In college, you try. You should be trying to get as much money as possible. And what do I mean by this? I mean, making sure your grades are high enough to apply for academic-based scholarships. You have to jump on these opportunities because so many students are in need and will be doing the same as well. So not just grades, understanding timing of when money is out there to help you pay through school. But is this the only means of paying for college? No. Let's look at something else. Grant money. This is part of a financial aid package for college. When you apply for loan money, the government will give you an amount of money that is not to be paid back. This is usually smaller than the loan money because the grant doesn't have to be paid back, of course. Now, is this the only means of getting a grant? No, it's not. There are independent ways of applying for open grants for school. Yet when you're in college, so many students neglect to do so. When there's free money out there, you have to snatch as much as you can to pay for school. Work it off. While you're in school, a good method to paying off college is the as-you-go-along method. This means even while you're in school, you pay with some type of part-time job or full-time job if you can handle the course load on top of that. And the way of paying for school is smart while you're in school because you can lighten the load of debt once you walk away from school. You may be broke, but hey, most college students are anyways. Now, keeping the student loans off your back? Paying it off. Moving back home is one of those ways of paying it off. Once you graduate from college, you'll be expected to start paying for college after a grace period. This is usually around six to eight months. So you better have something lined up once the school is over because that is a short period of time to get your life together. The best way to go about this is sometimes to move back home and pay off your debts. Now, I know it sucks to have to go back to that room you grew up in and listen to your parents' orders again, but there's potential for you to be debt-free by the time you are 30 years old. And to me, that sounds a lot better than trying to pay things off over your entire lifetime. Paying it off? How about the minimum pay? Let's say moving back home is a no-go for many. Then what you better do is make sure you can pay some type of payment plan lined up because you have to start paying the government. Now, the government knows finding employment is tough, especially in today's society. But you can pay something, which is why you should be looking to pay small amounts allowable. These small allowable amounts keep you paying, but also won't leave you in a possible position to have wages garnished on a job. Or you don't want to ruin your credit report and affect your ability to buy a car or even a house. What are some other paying methods? IDR and IVR. This is something that I have used over the years. It means you may be eligible to pay a small amount or even nothing depending on your income. But the payment of nothing means you're not making enough money to survive paying off the debt. Not paying back is good, but it means you're not doing well in society either. So in order to do well in society, you're going to be paying more for monthly debt. In my opinion, it makes more sense to do better in society and then pay higher college debt than to have a zero monthly payment 
and not make much money. Here's some don't do's when you're paying off your college debt. Here's a bit of advice from someone who has been down this road. Do not allow the interest to climb on the money you have to pay back. Interest payments are higher than some of my loans. Also, the government can't be looted for long. They will get their money even if they take your taxes. That's right. I've had my taxes taken by the government to pay towards student debt. And now I've recently had them garnish money from a checking account. Now I am on a payment plan that works for me, which keeps them away from you. And it helps because you have to survive. And if they're taking money from you this way from your bank account, you really have to pay it back. Why we all have to work on paying our student loans off. As I have stated throughout this entire passage, you have to come up with a means of paying for your college debt. It will not go away. Even if you try to file for bankruptcy, it is the one thing you cannot get rid of. So even when you have nothing to give, you still have this lingering over your head. And anytime you make money, unless it's under the table, you will be forever running from the government. So come up with a payment plan that works for you. So you're not being chased down because they will catch you. And in the longer you run, the heavier the penalty when they catch up to you. Thank you for listening to In The Know. I can't wait to bring the next episode where we talk about altering the language we use in school so students aren't triggered.